My name is Joe Rice. I'm a third generation glass worker. My grandfather, John St. Clair, started St. Clair Glass in Elwood, Indiana in 1938. He died in 1958, and my Uncle Joe took over operations until he passed away in 1987. So this place, actually, where we are out in the House of Glass here in, in Elwood, was left vacant. My Uncle Joe St. Clair became executor of the state, so he was to decide how it was to be disposed. So in 1987, my late wife and I bought this place, and I've been here ever since. I actually started working glass with my uncles when I was 12 years old. Uh, that would have been 1962, and you can do the math. So I've been around it for quite a few years, and I think probably have made nearly a million pieces of glass in my lifetime. We do make anything from paperweights to vases to perfume bottles to lamps and, and other collector's items. The mystique of art glass is that it is made by hand particularly in this day of mechanization and technology, something that's made entirely by hand by a craftsperson. Uh, it, it offers a, a unique opportunity to witness to this object that someone else has made. So the first bit of glass, he's dipping in chips of white frit. Tim will warm that in the glory hole and then he'll actually add another layer of white frit for the bottom part of the paperweight. We'll give it a quick block to shape the uh, flower bit up. Then we'll pick up a layer of crystal over the top. We can begin to shape the flowers and put in the bubbles. Well, everything is done by hand. There's no machine that's really been developed to create a paperweight in the way that we do. So we can make today, in the small facility we have, we can make about 60 pieces of glass a day. The difficulty is allowing the glass to do what it wants to do. Now this is ready to knock off and go to the annealing oven where it sits in there for two to three days to cool down slowly. So we just leave the door closed, wait till it gets down to about room temperature and take it out. Glass medium is a little bit more unusual than most. And it does require some discipline as far as the heat the strength of the arms manipulating the molten glass. One has to be unafraid of the steam, the heat, the smell, the smoke, and the hard, hot work. There is an internal feel for the glass that you just begin to sense what that glass is going to do. Knowing how and when to roll, to shape, to punch or prod, when to cool or jack, all those things just are a natural ability, I think, that's developed over the years with many people. It's not just something that you can pick up and do. It's a difficult craft to learn. Probably the biggest benefit that I derive from making glass is seeing the enjoyment in the eyes of the people that purchase the product. My grandfather had this vision that he wanted to make a nice piece of glass that everyone could enjoy, but also at a moderate price that everyone could afford. The connection's always going to be there with the family. For that, I'm forever grateful to have been blessed with the gifts to come into this family and to do what I've done for so many years. It's just something I really enjoy doing. It's not very often that someone can enjoy what they do and make a decent living from it as well. Well, 